Let's visit Uji today, a town near Kyoto where aristocrats like to construct their country residences. Part of the famous 10th century tale of Genji is staged here, and a lovely museum dedicated to the noble stands in the center of the town. But the gem of Uji is the former villa of the courtier Fujiwara no Michinaga. Michinaga was the father of the young empress of the time, for whom a lady-in-waiting, Murasaki Shikibu, was writing the stories that became the tale of Genji. It was a time when aristocrats dedicated a lot of attention to amorous emotions and enjoyed parties in their beautiful gardens, often with a background of music performed from a pair of boats, one of which with the head of a dragon called Ryu Tosen, and the other with the head of a legendary bird called Gekishu Sen. A brook of water supply, Yarimizu, ran into the property from the northeast, making a turn south and passing under the house, then turning to the west to flow out. Except for supplying water for the pond, this brook was to carry the evil spirits who were believed to intrude from the realm of the azure dragon in the east to the dominion of the powerful white tiger in the west. The azure dragon and the white tiger were two of the guardians of the four directions in Feng Shui, the other two being the black tortoise in, of the north and the vermilion bird of the south. If we trust the descriptions in the tale of Genji, the main garden of the time was built in the south yard of the house, as the emperor's garden, with a pond and a waterfall, a meandering stream for the game of poetry discussed in the previous movie, Japanese Gardens 4, and of course the island of Immortal, connected to the bank with a curved and a straight bridges. There were also back gardens without a pond, dry landscapes expressing the romantic mountain village. The idea of that mountain village came from an ancient Chinese story in which a fisherman, attracted by the beauty of blossoming mountain peaches, finds a cave through which he enters a secret village inhabited by mountain-dwelling immortals. Japanese nobles adopted the romantic image of the, that legend and often sang about it in their poetry, expressing it also in their pondless garden. Yet these exquisite gardens and their romantic lifestyle suddenly changed in the 11th century when Buddhist priests began to speak increasingly of the age of the Dharma decline and of the end of the world. What did they mean? After the death or the nirvana of the Buddha who has appeared to save humans from suffering their karma or with other words, the numerous rebirths, the holy teaching or the Dharma is spread by Buddha students. So follows a period when the teaching, the Dharma, gradually transforms and less and less resembles the original teaching of the Buddha until the time comes when it completely degenerates and cannot serve its purpose to deliver people from their rebirths anymore. In Japanese, that final stage is called mappo, literally end of the teaching. Soon after that should follow the end of the present universe, before the birth of a new one, when the cycle will start all over again. And in the 11th century, Priests said that Mappo had come. Japanese aristocrats panicked. They made more and more place in their hearts for prayer and found refuge in the belief of Amitabha's pure land. As I explained in the movie Japanese Gardens 3, 
In Mahayana, the great vehicle Buddhism, identical universes are supposed to succeed each other over every period of time called Kalpa in Sanskrit. And each universe had had its own Buddha to bring the holy teachings, the Dharma, that could ease the karmic suffering of human beings. With other words, except Shakyamuni, the Gautama Buddha, or the Buddha of our universe, there were numerous other Buddhas in the past, and there will be numerous Buddhas in the future. Amitabha, Amida in Japanese, whose name means infinite light, and who is also called Amitayus, and, or patron of eternal life, was a Buddha of a past universe, who is said to let into his pure land any believer without judging their needs, only by hearing them repeat, I rely on Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amida Butsu, in the Sanskrit-like language used by Japanese Buddhists. Amida himself, surrounded by beautiful mus musicians, singers and dancers, accompanies the soul of such a believer to the coveted paradise of his pure land. Thus prospered in the 11th century Japan the doctrine of the pure land Buddhism, to which courtiers began to dedicate their houses, converting them into temples. And such was the case with the son of Fujiwara no Michinaga, Yoritomo, who converted his father's opulent residence into a magnificent temple called Byodo-in, in which a huge statue of Buddha Amitabha was housed in the Amida Hall. That hall was also called Hodo from the 17th century on because of the two ho o birds on its roof. ho o or Feng Huang in Chinese, is usually translated as the Chinese phoenix, hence the English appellation Phoenix Hall. Yet actually, this is a word for two birds, a male Feng or Ho in Japanese and a female Huang in Chinese and O in Japanese. These two birds are depicted facing each other and are thought to bring the souls to the paradise of Amitabha's pure land. The statue of Amitabha at Byodoin te Temple is surrounded by a number of exquisite heavenly musicians and dancers. These stunning statues were carved by the sculptor Zhou Cho, whose canon of proportions and the technique to join multiple pieces of wood in one statue was to become the base of Japanese sculpture. Now, not only the houses of the nobles were converted into temples of Amitabha, the concept of their gardens too was refashioned into representing the pure land of this benevolent Buddha. In the blissful pure land Sukhavati, to the west of Mount Meru, the mountain of the Buddhist universe, among trees decorated with precious jewels and golden bells, in the branches of which fantastic birds sing, Amitabha sits on a lotus flower in the middle of the ocean which separates birth and death. The water of this ocean is a mixture of the seven precious metals, metals and stones, gold, silver, lapis lazuli, glass, giant clamshell, coral and agate. It is sweet, cool and pure, and it can nourish all the eight virtues of the heart, benevolence, righteousness, manners, wisdom, loyalty, trust or faith, filial piety and respect. So Japanese nobles of the 11th century called their poems Aji, the letter A, the first letter of the Sanskrit alphabet and the symbol of beginning and eternity. They transformed the island of its middle from the comma-shaped abode of Taoist immortals 
to the round-shaped abode of Amitabha Buddha, and the lake and the shima or the pond and island gardens thus became the pure land Sukhavati. He and his fellow aristocrats did not have to abandon their exquisite garden pleasures, because Sukhavati was a happy place full of music and refined pleasures. So the dragon and bird-headed boats, with musicians on board, continued to float on the pond, sometimes among lotus blossoms. The dances continued on the southern part of the yard, just in front of the main house, called Sand Beach, Suhama now, as it was covered with white sand. And now that we have an idea of its meaning, let us take a walk around the pure land garden of Gyodoin. <laughs> The rear of the Amitabha Hall is linked with the bank by a roof bridge called Kurehashi, hashi meaning bridge and kure being the Japanese reading of the sign for the Chinese kingdom Wu. According to the 8th century chronicle Nihon Shoki, such a bridge together with a symbolic Mount Meru were built by a Korean mason in the south court of Empress Suiko's palace during the 7th century, in what was probably one of the first Japanese gardens. Please note also the curved and straight bridges leading to the entrance of the Amida Hall, the same as the ones we saw at the Garden of Toin in one of the previous movies. Yodoin was beautifully restored to its past glory between 2012 and 2014. The initial colors were restored and the elegant statues of celestial musicians housed in a museum to amaze the eyes of generations on end. The small round stones covering the bottom of the pond were cleaned and laid again with care allowing the pond waters to reflect the as if ready to fly hall of the two phoenixes, as I would call it, as well as probably the numerous virtues of every single visitor. How about looking into the waters of the A pond and thinking of the virtues you treasure? Be well and safe.